Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, uh, South Australia Police uh, is launching its latest uh, driving campaign, the road safety campaign. And this particular campaign is focused at our older drivers on South Australian roads. Um, at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, the RAA and Charles Mountains here joining me today, and also the Council of the Ageing uh, for their input into uh, this uh, new driving campaign. This, camp this campaign, as I said, is, is uh, trying to reach out to older drivers, um, drivers who are 70 years or older, who actually are overrepresented in the lives lost in serious injuries on South Australian roads. Between 2015 and 2019, uh, 23 people uh, lost their, uh, over the age of 70 lost their lives on South Australian roads. Now, when you consider that um, older South Australians, again, uh, those over 70 uh, make up about 13% of the population, they're overrepresented in lives lost on South Australian roads. 23% or nearly a quarter of lives lost on South Australian roads are older drivers. Also, there's a large number of older drivers who are involved in serious injury crashes, um, about just under 100 over that five year period between 2015 and 2019. Uh, this campaign uh, is designed to try and start conversations uh, between uh, family members, between uh, the medical fraternity uh, with older drivers. It's also about um, perhaps reaching um, out to older drivers and, and tapping into circumstances they're familiar with and circumstances they've um, experienced themselves, which are early indicators of potentially needing to modify driving behaviour and potentially in some cases transition to um, stopping driving altogether. Now we know that this is a very emotive subject. Um, Driving is important for everybody. It's our mobility, it's our independence, it's our sense of self-worth in a lot of cases. So in developing this campaign, again, we're very mindful uh, to do some extensive market research to ensure that we actually reach out to older drivers and find out what worries them, what sort of things do they know about which are options for them as they, tend, as they look to modify their driving behaviour and indeed as they look to stop driving altogether. And some of the things that they've told us is that, and some of the things that are reflected in this ad campaign are that there are small signs uh, that start to creep in, uh, whether it is um, less comfortable driving at night time or in bad weather, uh, whether it's less comfortable uh, for them when they're driving in busy conditions and the like. And ultimately, what are people's options uh, if they do have to stop driving or modify their driving behaviour and therefore you know, reduce their mobility to a certain degree? So the lessons we've learned are both from the market research and also when engaging with uh, the REA and also Council of the Ageing is that there are other options available for our older drivers, um, such as uh, ride share and, and taxi rides, those types of things. Public transport, I think, is something that's well known. But there are also other programs which in certain circumstances can subsidise the costs of um, uh, alternate driving or assisted driving uh, means um, when uh, people are eligible for those circumstances. And I think that's part of what we've learned during this process as well, that people actually aren't aware of, of all of the available options which will assist them to maintain their independence and maintain their mobility. So as I said, this is the first campaign of its type in South Australia. Um, as we have been doing in more recent years, we are deliberately focusing our campaigns on specific cohorts of our people in our communities so that we can um, provide specific messaging for them and what we know their driving behaviours are to try and assist in keeping them safe on our roads and keeping other people safe on our roads as well. And I think for um, people like myself um, with uh, older parents and, and um, you know, people who have uh, older people who they're caring for, it often becomes the elephant in the room around the conversation uh, as to, you know, you, you're trying to look out for your loved ones you, you want to say something, you perhaps don't know how to say it, it's a really awkward conversation. This is what these ad campaigns are trying to do, is to try and encourage that conversation so that not only the older drivers themselves um, can be made more aware of what the options are available to them, but also so that loved ones um, can perhaps have that sensitive conversation uh, with, their, uh, with their older loved ones as well. And an important part of this campaign, the last part of this campaign, is we're reaching out to the, um, the medical fraternity as well because they have a critical role in making sure that people are medically safe um, to continue driving or if they do need to modify their driving behaviours that 
GPs and the like uh, understand also what resources are available to them and the critical role they play in keeping older drivers safe on South Australian roads. I'd la now like to pass over to Charles Mountain from the RAA to say a few words as well. Thank you. Right, and thanks very much for the opportunity to participate in this. This is obviously a very important issue for RAA because many of our members fall into the senior drivers category. And I'd say from the outset, most of the older drivers, senior drivers, are actually very good at self-regulating. You know, they, they're already doing things such as ensuring they try and avoid the most stressful driving times, uh, peak periods, poor weather conditions. But there's always, unfortunately, a group who perhaps are continuing to perhaps not look at the signs and are continuing to drive when perhaps they should be thinking about alternatives. And we think this is a, a great campaign to just raise that level of awareness and get people to just think about themselves uh, when they do get behind the wheel. Should they still be continuing to do this or should they be looking at other alternatives? And we recognise how challenging this is. Driving gives people an enormous level of flexibility to do things what they want and when they want to do it. Moving away from that flexibility can be really challenging for some people and particularly in some areas where alternatives are perhaps not as readily available as some other parts of the, uh, the area. So that's also something that needs to be taken into account. The other important point I would stress also that it's so important to look for the signs in terms of your overall health. So things such as your eyesight, blood pressure, you know, your cognitive ability, do you find it difficult or painful to do basic things like turn your neck. You know, those sort of things are often telltale signs that perhaps you should be thinking about whether I should be continuing to drive or whether I should be seeking some medical advice about how I can continue to do this safely. So all these elements are important. What we do know is that people's rate of cognitive decline varies dramatically between various people. So some people enjoy a, a wonderful level of fitness and activity into their senior years. Other people are less fortunate. So you really do need to ensure that whatever your personal circumstances, you owe it to yourself and other people on the road to ensure that you're as good as you can possibly be both from a, a medical perspective and also your overall cognitive ability as well. And let's face it, Driving, for a lot of people, is still a very pleasurable experience. It's a great way to get around and see South Australia. And I think one thing COVID has taught us is people still enjoy the driving holidays a lot. So we're seeing a lot of people doing that. But obviously, you can only enjoy that if your, your ability to drive safely is, is guaranteed. And you know, that's why we all have a part to play to ensure that we do that. And that's why we welcome this campaign so much. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, uh, look, every campaign that we um, undertake is um, we, we use market research every single time because we are very much focused on understanding uh, what worries individuals, uh, what reaches out to individuals in terms of our messaging, and that's what we're trying to do in this particular campaign. And, and I think with uh, the older driver campaign, you know, as Charles was saying, not every person has the same level of cognitive de decline or level of fitness. You know, so we're not, so the arbitrary figure, I guess, of, of 70 plus and saying older drivers in itself is going to offend some people. Um, we understand that. And it's an emotive subject. Um, but the reality is, is that 70%, sorry, 23% um, of people aged over 70 um, are involved in fatal crashes uh, in our state. So it's an important cohort of people to reach out to. And the messaging will be uh, relevant to people at certain stages beyond that age, um, but it becomes relevant at some point. Um, the importance of this is, as I said before, talking about the challenges and perhaps uh, limiting your driving and when you drive or even stopping driving is a highly emotive subject. And it, it becomes the elephant in the room when you're having a conversation with loved ones, particularly you know, children or um, you know, relatives of, of older drivers don't know how to approach this conversation. Um, I think GPs, it would be fair to say that there may be some GPs, who, particularly in areas where other transport um, options are limited, may err on the side of um, allowing the person to continue driving and things like that. As long as these decisions are considered decisions, as long as we're having these conversations, we're actually hoping that, um, in the first instance, that older drivers themselves recognise and not um, keep their head in the sand in relation to what's happening um, so because there are things they can do by modifying their driving behaviour in the first instance and then if they really do need to stop driving um, and that, that, that becomes their decision um, and, but they, 
they can do it knowing that there are other options or they know where to go to look for other options so they can still maintain their independence and their mo and mobility. So this campaign isn't just about stop and drive, but maybe limiting when you drive or where you drive? Absolutely. As I said, we're not uh, trying to stereotype the over 70s. Um, what we're saying is that we know um, from our road crash statistics that over 70 year olds are over representative in comparison to the population. We're not saying to you stop driving. We're saying to you recognise the signs. Um, there are options for you about, in the first instance, modifying your driving behaviour and when you drive and the like. And then ultimately, if you do end up having to come to a decision where you need to stop driving, you can do so on your terms um, with a good understanding of what other support um, services are available for you. You said this is the first campaign of its type in South Australia. Why now? Did we see um, numbers skyrocket? Yeah, the, the, our main concern has been uh, the overrepresentation, as I've said before. So 13% of the population is aged 70 or over. 23% of that population uh, has been involved in fatal crashes uh, over the last uh, five years of 2015 to 2019. So 23 people, so nearly a quarter um, of the lives lost have been uh, older South Australians. As we have with other um, targeted campaigns in the last um, two years in particular, we're reaching out specifically to individual cohorts to try and give them additional information so that they can make better decisions themselves. We're clearly um, trying to start conversations with certain um, cohorts of our community and we've had some excellent conversations starting about some recent road safety campaigns targeting 20, 40, 20 to 40 year old males about drink driving. Um, we've had some other um, really good conversations and um, I guess many campaigns around the impact on families and the drivers who are actually involved when we talked about the Holbrook family and you know what, um, what's happened uh, in, their, in their circumstances as well. So. You know, there's a range of different things that we're trying to do here. Rather than have a blanket message which doesn't appeal to everybody, we're actually trying to target our messaging here so it's relevant for people, it's useful for people, and it saves lives. Do you think it will hit home? Uh, I think it hits home. Uh, but, but that's, I guess, one person's opinion. I think what's really important out of this um, uh, uh, media campaign is that we've road tested um, these adverts uh, with the target audience, um, with the people who it most impacts, through the market research, and this is what they've told us reaches out to them because they can recognise some of the things that are in these media campaigns as being applicable to them. They've experienced those circumstances themselves or they have loved ones or other ones that may know who've experienced these circumstances themselves. And indeed, we actually have modified this campaign based on the feedback that we've been provided by the research group. So we think it's really um, applicable to the people who we're, who we're reaching out to. What are your main messages to GPs? Um, what should they be looking out for? Uh, look, GPs generally know what they should be looking out for. So again, this is really about um, uh, closing the loop on every single element of um, who should be looking after older drivers. So older drivers themselves should be looking after themselves. Family members should be looking after older drivers. And GPs should be looking after older drivers. It can be a really challenging decision for GPs to make as well. Um, at the end of the day, they're human as well, and they've got to make these decisions and, and talk to older drivers about how they can actually... Um, continue to drive in some circumstances, or ultimately they need to be a decision maker that can clearly and sensitively explain to a person that perhaps they need to stop driving. So this is about um, also providing information to the GP networks, the, the medical fraternity around uh, complementary messaging for the overall road safety campaign. So we really are trying to empower everybody to understand what their options are and everybody to take responsibility. This is also about saying, Do you know, what, I, I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so this is about empowering them to make decisions around maybe not do, continuing to do that. Where will we be seeing this messaging? Will these be going up sort of on bus stops and that sort of thing? Or? So it's a, it's a um, widespread uh, media campaign, this one. So there'll be TV commercials, there'll be radio adverts and also physical advertising as well. Uh, the, the advertising will start this Sunday um, right across uh, each of the media channels. Uh, and again, we're really hoping, as with all of these media campaigns, that it starts conversations. Um, you know, it starts meaningful conversations, helpful conversations, where people understand what options they have available to them, where the information is that they can actually uh, pick up uh, different ideas as to how they can modify their driving behaviour in the first instance, and, and also, in some circumstances, um, tackle that elephant in the room and, and talk about stopping driving where it's, where it's appropriate. Was there any 
any consideration to have mandatory testing after a certain age for people's driving ability? I think what's really important um, is that we're not at a crisis stage here. You know, we're actually still at a stage where it's really important and there are too many older drivers um, uh, dying on our roads. But we're not at a critical stage here where we should take that decision-making ability away from the individual drivers themselves. You know, we're talking about responsible people here who drive more responsibly because they do know their limits and they do know that they are actually starting to feel less confident on the road. So this is about actually um, empowering the individual drivers to continue to have their independence, to continue to have their own responsibility and take responsibility for their own driving behaviour rather than coming down with a, a sledgehammer on a walnut here in terms of you know, being um, overbearing when there are other, other options available. But I think it's a really impo important point here is that it's a really difficult conversation. Um, it's a really emotive issue. And, and one day we're all going to get there at some point. So you know, it becomes emotive because it applies to us in the future at some point in time as well if it doesn't apply now. So I think the important part is that it's in, we feel that older South Australians are absolutely capable of making that decision. We just want to give them the information um, that's out there and available to them, um, identify the alternatives to driving themselves so that they can actually make those decisions themselves. Is it something that might be considered if this doesn't hit home and we don't see a change in those numbers? Uh, we're always looking at different ways of actually making sure that we um, save lives on South Australian roads. Um, we have a target of, at, um, of zero lives by 2050, lives lost on, on um, national roads, South Australian roads as well. So you know, ultimately we look at what's required to be done, what's reasonable to be done, um, but I don't think we're there yet. These over 70 fatalities, are they usually happening more in metro areas as opposed to regional areas? Do you have those figures? Uh, so I don't have the specific figures in relation to um, the split, but it, it's not that different, I think, to between metro and regional. And unfortunately, already again uh, this year, we've had 10 lives lost in comparison to 15 last year. 80% of the lives lost on South Australian roads so far this year have been on regional roads, which is consistent with previous years. Around 70 to 72% of lives lost are on regional roads. When we talk about older drivers in particular, um, I think the, the common phrase that people come up with is the grey nomads with the caravans and, and, and the like. And there are some concerns about, you know, can you actually drive longer or can you drive for as long as you get older? I think the, generally the answer is no. Um, and there's lots of information and driving courses available either from manufacturers or other providers around driving caravans and driving in the country and longer hours and things like that. So regional areas in terms of lives lost um, continue to concern us um, and they're applicable to this age group as well. Any questions for Charles? Thank you. No, okay. Um, let's have a look at the places. You want to get the places next to it?